I must tell you, as the shows go by, as the weeks go by, one thing that that tells me as a fan is we are getting that much closer to Gustafson versus Verdum. Look, that's just a match that was never supposed to happen. Two guys in two different weight classes, the top contender from light heavyweight in Gustafson, the champion of the world from heavyweight in Verdum. And by the way, speaking of it was never supposed to happen. It was never supposed to happen to the fact that they both knew that. They were both in Orange County together, and they both got together in a training room and did some practicing. Now, I had heard about that workout. And anytime you got two top guys in the world, even in a practice room session, it's a little bit different when they aren't teammates. And this was a situation where Gus found out about these workouts, made a phone call, yeah, come on in, and he goes in and puts his gear on. Now, Gus doesn't know what to expect. That's a very real thing. I don't love these situations. If I'm working with a guy or I'm coaching a guy, I would never have him, when he has a fight, on the horizon spar with somebody he didn't know. No matter how good the guy was or how good the workout would be, when the fight is on the horizon, you just keep them apart because sometimes even the great fighters don't use control when they see fresh meat. When they see a new opportunity, they'll treat their teammates one way. They'll treat their practice partners, but when somebody new comes in, they will see this as a challenge and they will see it incumbent upon them to defend their territory at times. It's just a risky game. But you'd be surprised how often it happens, 40, 45%. That's almost half of the time a sparring session turns into a fight. Now, these two had done their little workout in like 2012. I'm a state away in Oregon. I heard about it. It was a big deal. You get two top guys together on a Saturday afternoon, that sounds a lot like a fight. But he does. So I heard about this workout, and I was never clear on, did they do the whole workout together? Did they spend 20, 25 minutes going hard? Did they take the gloves off, get on the ground, do some work there? I was never really clear on that. And Verdum recently weighed in on it. And Verdum came out and said, I remember sparring with him, because I remember he needed five stitches when we were done. That could be accurate. That could be false. But the mere fact that it does lead back to my initial premise, which is things happen in those sparring sessions when two teammates, I apologize, when two non-teammates decide to go at it. Everybody's got an ego and everybody's got some level of pride. And those things tend to escalate. Verdum is also known as a guy who spars very hard in the practice room. I don't know if that's Gus's habit or not. But the mindset is interesting going in because, yes, both guys are going to remember that workout. And it appears that Verdum remembers not having all that hard of a time with Gus. But what Verdum could be miscalculating is that Gus is still pissed off from that workout because Verdum went harder than he thought they were going to go. I don't know. I'm speculating at best. But I've seen these things over my career. I've seen these things over a course of time. I can share one with you. When Phil Baroni came out to Team Quest to train with us. He, he had this back and forth with Matt Lindlin. They worked it out a couple of times, and somewhere along the way, Phil decides he's going to come out and train with us. So Phil comes out, but within our room was also Evan Tanner. Same weight class. These guys were likely worlds apart, never going to see each other. And we only had six guys in the room that day. And I'm sparring. I'm doing my thing. I'm over here, and I can hear these two fighting. I can hear... That's not how sparring should sound. That wasn't how my sparring was sounding. There's only three groups. There's six of us. They then start yelling profanities at each other. And I don't know who's saying what. I don't know who's who in this whole melee. But Randy Couture, who was going with somebody who I believe was Tim Sylvia at the time. I believe Tim was in town training with us. But I might be adding that piece. But Randy has to stop what he's doing to break these two up. Now, Randy made one mistake in that. When he broke them up, he didn't separate them. He didn't separate them like, uh, like two high school children, okay? He allowed them to continue to go with each other after getting a verbal scolding. Well, that held up for about a minute, and it happens again. I start hearing. I can, that's not how sparring should say. I can hear. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I'm tired. Got my own thing going, and I can still hear this. I remember right where I was, and this was way back in like 2004. 2003. I still remember it. Randy had to break them up again, but this time he didn't let them go with each other again. They just had to sit down. You, you're you out and you're out. And there's only, there's only four more of us in there. They have to sit down like children. So 
That didn't go well. Evan was all kinds of pissed off. Phil's all kind of pissed off. Phil ends up leaving our gym. I think it, I think before Phil had even left the gym, he was going on the internet and putting out messages against Evan. I think I think that part is true. Because I seem to remember Phil coming back in like the next day or so when the whole world is talking about this sparring session between he and Evan and this terrible experience at Team Quest. And Phil was like putting his gear on like, what? What did I do? Hey, Evan, let, let's, let's go today. There, there was something about that. About, but then they end up having a fight. And if, I want to say they even had to go do two fights. So there's a way that these things happen where both guys come away with a little bit different opinion and interpretation. And I do think that if Gus is going to come back and he's going to come back in the heavyweight division, you might as well jump right in the deep end.